Okay, uh, so next class, punta na tayo sa risk and return of a portfolio of assets naman. Okay? So, portfolio risk and return. So, ano ba yung uh, definition natin ng portfolio or investment portfolio? So, that is any collection or combination of financial assets. So, instead daw na nag invest lang tayo sa isang asset, so, na-mention natin yan kanina, dinadiversify natin. So, meron tayo collection or combination of financial assets. So, if we assume all investors are rational, so, and therefore risk-averse, uh, that investor will always choose to invest in portfolios rather than in single assets. So, diversification instead of focus. Okay? So, investors will hold portfolios because he or she will diversify away a portion of the risk. Yan. That is inherent in putting all your eggs in one basket. Diba? Familiar ba sa inyo yung term na yan? Putting all your eggs in one basket. So, syempre, pag nabitawan mo yung basket, yun, yun, basag lahat yung eggs. So, ganun din sa investment. So, kapag nalugi yung, uh, uh, yung nag-iisang asset na yun, lugi na yung buong investment. So, instead, ayan, nag-diversify uh, tayo, multiple assets. Okay? So, ganun din ka sa, especially sa investment in stocks, uh, normally, din na-diversify. Instead of investing in a single company or in a single industry, ayan, nag-invest uh, tayo in multiple assets, uh, multiple companies in multiple industries. So, kapag ganun ang ginawa mo, portfolio na yon Portfolio or collection of financial assets. Okay? Uh, so, first, we have portfolio return. So, the return of a portfolio is a weighted average ulit of the returns on the individual assets from which it is formed and can be calculated as. So, uh, para daw makompute natin yung uh, portfolio return, so, dapat daw alam natin yung return of the individual assets. Uh, inside the portfolio. Okay, so how do we compute for that? O, oh, ayan na ulit. O, oh, magpapanik. Okay? So, K is, uh, ayan, makalagi pala dito. So, K is, again, uh, the return, the return of the portfolio. Okay? So, that is the sum of WJ, the proportion of the portfolio's total peso value represented by asset J. Okay? So, dito, ilang percent ba ng portfolio yung asset na yan? Kung 50%, edi 50% yung W. Okay? And then, uh, K, o, alam mo ulit yung K, that is return of that specific asset or return on asset J. So, dalawa pala kailangan natin. Uh, anong portion, di ba, anong, uh, or anong proportion ng total portfolio yung asset J? Okay? And then, what is the return on asset J? Meaning nito class, ah, pag pinag-add-add natin itong proportion of the portfolio's total peso value represented by assets comprising uh, the portfolio, 100 yan. Yeah, kasi lahat ng assets yun eh. Inside the portfolio. Okay? So yan, weighted average daw natin. Yeah, so ang best example natin dito class ay yung investment in index funds. Yan. Uh, especially yung equity index funds. So ano ba yun? Instead of investing daw sa stocks, pwede ka daw mag-invest sa uh, index funds. So, class ito, uh, kinuha ko lang to sa equity index fund ng uh, isang financial institution. So, ito daw yung kanyang top 10 holdings. So, yan, 13.79 sa SM Investment, 10.82 sa SM Prime, and so on. So, yan, naka-diversify. So, actually, hindi ito lahat eh. Kasi 64.86% lang daw to. So anyway, so paano natin i-compute yung return ng portfolio na yan? So syempre, 13.79% multiplied by the return on SM investments. 10.82% multiplied by the return on SM prime. And then, ito total natin. Okay? So, ayan. Ayun, lumabas na. BDO, <laughs> equity fund. So, ayan yung performance niya. Okay? So, itong uh, 5.9%, uh, negative 19.09%. Negative 26.65%, paano na-obtain yan? Using the weighted average of the returns of these assets. Okay? So, yun yung return. So, uh, for example, assume that we wish to determine the expected value and standard deviation of returns for portfolio XY created by combining equal, pro uh, equal proportions or portions of assets X and Y 50-50. So, the expected returns of assets X and Y for each of the next 5 years are given below. So, ayan. K asset X, uh, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. K asset Y, 16, 14, 12, 10, and 8. 
So the expected uh, portfolio return is uh, 12%. Paano na obtain to? 8% times 50% yung X, 16% times 50% din yung Y, so 12. Okay, and then uh, dito naman, 10% times 50%, and then plus 14% times 50%, 12% din. 12% times 50%, plus 12% times 50%, 12%. Okay, 14% times 50%, plus 10% times 50%, 12%. And uh, also for this one, year 5, 16 times 50%, plus 8 uh, times 50%, 12% also. Okay, so pag tinotal, uh, so actually ito kasi uh, every year na to eh, di ba? Every year na yung uh, expected portfolio return. So pag tinotal mo yun, yun na yung ating return on the portfolio. Okay, so let's see, uh, okay na tayo sa return. So what if ang measure naman natin ay yung risk or yung standard deviation? So, uh, class, uh, ito, standard deviation, class, uh, ito ha, i-explain ko lang. Dito kasi, kung mapapansin nyo, wala kasi sinabi yung probability eh. Di ba? Wala sinabi ano yung probability na ito yung mangyayari or uh, anong probability na ito or ito yung mangyayari. So, in that case, we will assume that uh, it is equal. Okay, uh, walang given eh. Okay, so how do we compute for the standard deviation when the probability of outcome is not given or it is equal. So, ganito daw yon. So, square root of summation of, again, ganun pa din, di ba? Yung difference between the return on the portfolio minus the return on the portfolio uh, uh, k bar. A okay? squared. All over the number of outcomes minus 1. Okay, so, k portfolio xy, how do we compute for that? So, ito, ito yung ating... Uh, Return on the portfolio, 12%. Kasi itong KP bar, paano natin makakompute yan? So, 12% for 5 years yan, di ba? So, 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 divided by 5. Kaya hindi natin alam eh. So, assume equal yung probability. Okay, so 12% din. Okay, so KP minus KP bar, 0. Uh, so, pag yung square natin yan, 0. All over N minus 1. So, 5 minus 1 is 4 for observations yan. So, 0, square root of 0. So, the standard deviation is 0%. Okay. So, ito, ito talaga yung uh, maganda yung pagkaka-diversify ng portfolio kasi kung mapapansin yung class, yung direction dito, completely opposite. Diba? Increasing returns kx, decreasing returns kay y. Okay. So next, uh, for the portfolio risk, diversification that is enhanced depending upon the extent to which the returns on assets move together. Okay? So uh, this movement is typically measured by a statistic known as correlation as shown in the figure below. So correlation yung tawag. Okay, so meron tayong dalawang types. So we have perfectly positively correlated. So dito, uh, the returns on uh, both assets are moving in the same direction. Ayan o, no? same direction. Perfectly, positively correlated. And we also have perfectly negatively correlated, uh, wherein uh, the returns on the assets move in the opposite direction. Okay, so ayan o, no? opposite direction. So syempre, class, kung tayo nagda-diversify, ito yung tinitingnan natin. Uh, when the assets are moving... Uh, or the returns are moving in the opposite direction. Kasi kung same direction yan, hindi ka nagda-diversify dyan. Okay? So, dito yung diversification nangyayari. Kapag uh, meron tayong opposite. So, not necessarily perfectly opposite direction. Okay? So, uh, even if two assets are not perfectly negatively correlated, so, yan, no? kahit naman hindi perfectly negatively correlated, an investor can still realize diversification benefits from combining them in a portfolio. So, as shown here. So, for example, we have two assets F and G. So, ito yung uh, return on asset F. Ito yung return on asset G. So, kung mapapansin nyo, class, hindi naman siya perfectly negatively correlated or yung exactly mirrors. Okay? However, since they are moving in the opposite direction, pwede pa rin yan maging diversification. So, combined uh, portfolio of assets F and G. So, yan. Okay? So, uh, mas uh, naging stable. Okay? So, next, uh, for the portfolio risk and return, 
Ayan. So, le uh, let's say we have asset X, asset Y, and asset Z. So, i-continue lang natin yung kanina with the addition of asset Z. Okay. So, for asset X, given na yan, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Asset Y, 16, 14, 12, 10, and 8. Asset Z, so let's say ang return niya ay 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. So, same lang ng asset X. So, uh, kay portfolio XY, anong return niya na compute na natin to 50 times 8, 50 times 16, and so on, 12%. Uh, so, kay, kay XZ naman, plus ganun din na, let's say na 50-50 din. Uh, 8% times 50, plus 8% times 50, so 8%. So, syempre, since uh, completely equal naman yan, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 na rin yung kay portfolio XZ. So, okay, let's uh, compute for the expected return. A and the standard deviation. For asset X, so the expected return, 12%. So, in average lang natin yan, since nga, hindi tayo given ng probability. So, 12%. Kay asset Y, in average lang natin, 12%. And also kay asset Z. Okay, kay XY, so ganun din, 12% uh, times 5, divide 5. So, dito din, ganun din, add natin, divide by 5, 12%. So class, uh, kung mapapansin natin, yung expected uh, rate of return, lahat yan 12%. Pero hindi ibig sabihin yan, kahit saan ka mag-invest, okay na. Kasi pare-pares ng return. Uh, kasi magkakaiba ng level of risk. So ito yung tingnan natin ngayon. So how do we compute for the standard deviation of asset X, Y, and Z? So ito na yung na-discuss natin kanina. Uh, na-discuss na natin yung uh, computing the standard deviation for a single asset. So, 3.16%, 3.16%. Okay? And kay portfolio, uh, kay portfolio XY, so 0. Kasi lalabas dyan, ano eh. Ang KP bar niya, 12%. Ay, eto pala, kinumpute natin kanina, 0. 0 nga siya. And kay portfolio XZ, 3.16%. Okay? So, since alam natin, class na ang standard deviation is also a measure of risk, the higher the standard deviation, the higher the risk. Siyempre, mas mataas pala yung risk dito. Pag nag-invest ka kay X alone, kay Y alone, kay Z alone, so dito, putting uh, your X in one basket. Uh, risky daw yan. Or, kay XZ. So, siyempre, ang question mo dito, Sir, eh, di ba portfolio na yan? Bakit ano pa din? Risky. Kasi, the assets are moving in the same direction. Yan yung return nila. So dito, hindi ka nag-diversify. So, most likely, itong asset X and asset Z belonging to the same ano to, eh, industry or type. So hindi ka nag-diversify dyan. Focus yan. Okay? <clears throat> so ito, uh, itong last asset X and asset Y, so kung titignan natin, ito yung tinatawag natin ka sa perfectly negative correlation. Perfectly negative correlation talagang uh, inverse okay yung direction of move and ito naman asset x and asset z perfectly positive correlation okay so ito ay riskier so hindi na da diversify yung risk okay so ano yung, ano ba yung analysis ng uh, correlation coefficient so yan we have positive 1 0 and negative 1 Okay, so class, uh, kapag daw, um, uh, dalawa kasi tinitingnan natin eh, the range of the return and the range of risk. When we say uh, perfectly positive, uncorrelated or perfectly negative, same lang yan. The range of return, lagi yung maglalay in between the returns of two assets held in isolation. Yan, lagi maglalay in between. Okay, the returns of the two assets held in isolation. So, kung dito, so alin ba yung returns of the two assets held in isolation? So, kung ito, for example, plus dito sa year 1, oh, ano ba dito yung range of return mo? Eh, di 8% to 16% in between that, uh, the returns of the assets held in isolation. Okay? Pero yung level of risk, oh, dyan na magkakaiba-iba. Kasi kung perfectly positive, yan, kasi kung perfectly positive meaning, uh, the returns are moving in the same direction yan, di ba? So, between the risk of two assets held in isolation. So, between sa risk level, okay, itong two assets na to. Okay?
And then, kung uncorrelated between the risk of the most risky asset and an amount less than the risk of the least risky asset but greater than zero. So later, papakita ko to. Makikita naman natin to sa chart. Okay? And then, kung perfectly negative, between the risk of the most risky asset and zero. Okay? So, class, nasan yung diversification? Patandaan mo, saan uh, tayo magkakaroon ng diversification if opposite direction? So, dito, between the risk of most risky asset and zero. Okay, so, ito na. Yan. Class, if we are looking at the range of return, same lang yan, di ba, sa lahat sa kanila between the uh, returns of assets held in isolation. So, let's say we have uh, assets P and Q in this situation. So, ayan o. Oh. Um, the return on asset P, return on asset Q. So, the return of the portfolio, whether perfectly positive, uncorrelated, or perfectly negative, would lie in between uh, the returns of two assets held in isolation, P and Q. Okay po. So, while yung uh, portfolio risk naman, okay, ito yung sinasabi ko, yung perfectly positive would lie in between the risk uh, of two assets held in isolation. Yung standard deviation ni asset P and standard deviation ni asset Q. Yung perfectly positive. Kung uncorrelated naman, in between, okay, uh, tandaan nyo yung sinabi ko kanina, in between, ah, uh, the risk of two assets held in isolation uh, but greater than zero. Okay? Between the risk of the most risky asset and then, ito, less than the uh, risk of the less risky asset but greater than zero. Okay? And kung perfectly negative naman, so ito, between uh, the risk of the most risky asset and zero. So class, kung mapapansin nyo, alin dito yung, sa returns kasi wala naman tayo makikita ang difference eh. So dito sa risk level, alin ang mas risky? Ito, kasi yung risk level niya naglalay in between higher amounts or higher uh, percentage. Alin ang least uh, risky? Ito, dahil ito ay nakadiversify. Okay? So, yan yung ating portfolio risk and return.